Hello, beloved, praise the Lord, and God is good. Merry Christmas. It's a blessed wish. Happy, happy Christmas celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our Prince of Peace. He is our Emmanuel, meaning God is with us, and God does it. John 3.16 puts it all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only beloved begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall never perish but have eternal life. And so this Christmas season we are here to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus comes to save us and so that we can have eternal life. And so brethren, the year is closely but surely coming to an end. But we know that this Christmas we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ to be born in our lives. We cannot go to Bethlehem, we cannot go to Judea, but now our celebration comes to us in our hearts thousands of years ago, but the birth remains fresh in our minds. And so this season, I come with a message, of course, the entire year, the entire season, we've been sharing, finding God. This is a series, and we thank God that we've had them all through. So from finding God, we come with a passage that we're going to share together as we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this passage is the prophecy that was given by Prophet Isaiah in chapter 9. And we read from there, and the Bible says in verse 2 that the people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of shadow of death a light has dawned you have enlarged the nations and increased their joy their joy before they rejoice before before you as people rejoice at the harvest as men rejoice when dividing the plunder for as in the day of Midian's defeat you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of the oppressor. Every warrior's boot, the Bible says, used in battle, and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. Now, verse 6, this is our center of the message, that for to us, a child is born. And of course, we're celebrating Christmas and the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so verse 6 is where we bless ourselves. For to us a child is born, to us a child is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called, these are the names, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. My brethren, there is nothing that we can celebrate during this season. Prophet Isaiah gives us the message of the celebration. Of course, he prophesied this thousands of years before Jesus would come. And it came true that one time in a manger, in a lowly place, Jesus is born, the Savior is born, the Prince of Peace is born, the Lord comes humbly through the Virgin birth, through the Virgin Mary, and he's born in the manger. And of course, he comes at a time when people are not expecting him. And he comes at a time when the Jews were under the government of the Romans, they were a colony, they were colonized. And so the life of being colonized was not simple. Everything was in darkness, everything was in turmoil, everything was confused. They were not actually enjoying their peace. And so the Lord Jesus Christ comes and is born in such situations, in such circumstances, actually to uplift. And of course, the place where he was born, in a manger, the lowly place, and you know, the Bethlehem place there, 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 there behind, and the shepherds come to the limelight because actually shepherding was the most despised job. But look, listen, he comes at the Prince of Peace and is, is born in such circumstances. And so in during this Christmas, we discover that the Lord is the uplifter. 
in our situations. And some of us couldn't be anywhere. But because we have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are able to speak, we are able to, you know, we are, we are people that people can see because the Lord God has uplifted us. So praise the Lord that he has uplifted you. Praise the Lord that he has brought you out into the light. And of course, he said the people that walked in the, light, in the darkness, a great light has shone among, upon them. And so this is the message, that he is the Prince of Peace. And so he brings life to those that are lifeless. He brings peace. He brings joy to those that are, are joyless. And he brought joy to the shepherds. Remember they sang, the angels from, from on above came and they were pronouncing that this day in Jerusalem. When you read uh, Luke chapter two, we find the messages there. But we discover that Christmas is about joy because they were singing, they were dancing, the angels attracting the attention of the angels and were singing holy in the highest and because Jesus had been born and he's the Prince of Peace. So friends, we can join still the same Isaiah. In chapter 64, verse 1, Isaiah makes a cry, another cry, and says, oh, that you would rend heaven and come down. And so actually God comes down and remember, he relieves us of our stresses. Remember, he gives us the, the joy that we, we don't have. And so he comes down, he would rend the heavens, and he came through his son, Jesus Christ. And that's what we call incarnation in the other language. And incarnation means God becoming man, God changing form and coming to be like one of us, like us. And so that actually we can interact with him, you can talk with him, you can pray with him. And so that he feels the human nature. You know, he could, you know, he could feel it, he could get hungry, he could fall, I mean, he could walk on foot, he could get tired, Jesus would speak would sleep and you know he could get angry he could he got hungry and all these things and so god becomes man he takes our shape and this is the love this is the love of our father and so that when he comes to save he saves the people and he's among them and so the incarnation story becomes a reality on a christmas day and so with that he would rend heaven and come down isaiah 64 verse 1 and so that he could come to give us the peace he is the fountain of peace so and so that he can deal with our peacelessness he can deal with our messes he can deal with our frustrations and this is the message that this year as the lord opens it up for us this christmas season that take the message and enjoy the Prince of Peace, born in Bethlehem in the manger, like I've already said, and he uplifts situations. He uplifted them, and he also uplifts you. And so I pray that this, this Christmas, the Lord uplifts you. And so in this Christmas season, I also want to bring to you the message that St. Paul puts to his people. And in, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse uh, 14 to 18, he is the Prince of Peace, Isaiah has said. And in chapter 2 of Ephesians, verse 14, Paul builds a point. And it is my wish for you. It's my desire for you, like, you know, in your family, in your house. And of course, this season brings us all together, mothers and fathers and children, to celebrate together. And of course, there are circumstances that are unbearable, that some children can be away, that some parents can be away. But it's a time of reunion, coming together, gift giving and things like that. And so... John Paul puts it that for he himself is our peace who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace, pray the Lord. And this, in this, in this one, in this one body, to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace. And that's in verse 17. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. And he provided accessibility, divide, removing the wall of division, removing the barrier 
that stopped us from reaching our Father. And so friends, this is our joy, that Christ is our peace. And we pray that during this Christmas season, Daddy and Mommy, you're at peace. Parents and children, you're at peace. With your neighbor, at peace. And how we pray for the world, which is now peaceless. Nations attacking nations. You know, things happening in our region, Eastern region, in Eastern Africa region. We pray that actually the peace of the Lord will reign in our countries. And, but it begins with our heart. It will be start to begin with the individuals. It begins with you. And so Paul puts it that for he himself is our peace. And how I pray that he who destroyed the barriers at that time, that dividing the world, the dividing wall of hostility, that all the hostilities in our neighborhoods, that all the hostilities with our neighbors, all the hostilities within us, and sometimes we become also hostile to ourselves. But this Christmas we pray that how he could rend heaven and come down and bring us peace and joy. So after the resurrection, I wanted to bring also to your notice that our Lord Jesus Christ noticed that the disciples were peaceless, they were anxiety stricken, worry laden, full of worry and fear stricken. Jesus knows what he desire most. You and I, he says peace and peace in that language is called shalom. And when he appears in John chapter 20, verse 21, John 20, 21, he finds them hidden and he says, peace be with you. And so friends, the Prince of Peace is the one that gives the peace, the one that ushers us to the peace. And so he says, peace be with you. And so friends, I pray that the peace of the Lord be upon you, that the joy of the Lord is upon you. And so the Christmas that is, that we're celebrating this season, at least the Christmas that we are having now, I also pronounce that you need Shar Shalom. In the other language, Shar Shalom means the Prince of Peace. Shar Shalom. You need the Prince of Peace in your heart. You need the Prince of Peace in your marriage. You need the Prince of Peace in, in your family. You need the Prince of Peace at your workplace. You need the Prince of Peace. We need the Prince of Peace in our region. We need this Prince of Peace. And when your heart is at peace, Remember, when you're going to sleep, you need peace in order sleep to, for sleep to come and you rest well. But if you are peaceless, full of, strife, of anxiety and strife, sleep cannot come. And you wake up exhausted because you are peaceless. But I pray for you that you come down. And the reason why Jesus went about, even when the seas were raging, remember when he came to the storm, he says, peace, be still, and I was calm. And how I pray for my heart and how I pray for your heart that Jesus will come it down. That the Prince of Peace will come it down during this Christmas and that you'll enjoy the Shar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. And so he is the one that can remove peaceless, disturbing, um, you know, peace disturbing factors in our lives. There are so many things. Poverty, you know, the levels of the li livelihoods these days. Of course, so many things, poverty, hunger, and, you know, natural calamities, the year that has been muddled with so many things. Of course, we've been just been in COVID times and now Ebola and things like that. We have struggled. And so my prayer is that during our struggles, we have struggled with the prices going high and so many things that have made us um, have peaceless lives. I pray that you secure, that the Lord secures your peace. Of course, he is the Prince of Peace. He is Shar Shalom. So Christ's kingdom is established on peace. And the reason why he is the Prince of Peace now, as I come to the conclusion of this Christmas message, Prince of Peace, Shar Shalom, that he will reign in your heart. Now, these are a few things that I want to mention that he does the following if you welcome him in your life. He brings peace. In life with trials and temptations. Of course, our lives are laden with the trials and temptations. But he brings peace. Pray the Lord that he brings peace. And during life with trials and temptations, the year has been full of trials and temptations. Life is full of trials and temptations. So many things have happened. But as we read John 14, 27, the Lord Jesus Christ said, Peace, I live with you. And so, friends, this Christmas season, and as the year winds up, I also mention that may the peace of the Lord be with you. Because life is trials, you cannot avoid them. Life is temptations, you cannot avoid them. Life is hassles, 
cannot avoid them. Of course, some people you hear have been about hustling, and many, many people are hustlers, and a hustler will do, I mean, it's a bit life of struggle, but you are aiming higher and higher. And as you move, may the peace of the Lord be with you. So that's the number one, that he brings peace in life's trials and temptations. Number two, as I finish also, that he gives peace in life's maturing process. We all mature. Now, the year that is coming, I'll be counting years. And I was not like this some years back. So every year that goes, this Christmas, I don't know how many Christmases that we have celebrated, and we are celebrating another one. And we pray that God will give us another one, and then another one. And so as we mature, we need peace in life, it's a maturing process. So as we mature, like we read in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, part A, he says, now, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And so that actually God will sanctify you, and that God will sanctify me, and the peace is what we desire, that you need the peace in your maturing process. As you grow older, you get married, you bring children come, I mean, many other things come in, but as they come in, they come in with lots of things. It is a local language here that I mean, they say that okulowone, that I mean, you, you grow up and you will see things. And as you mature, many, many, many challenges keep coming in. But he is the one that comes in. When he comes in, things stabilize and you are able to forge forward. You are able to move forward. You are able to go forward. Like the children of Israel, as the more they had demands, the more challenges they faced. But those who persisted, remember Joshua and others, they were able to, to be ushered into the promised land. And so we went for our, our promised land. And as we mature, may the peace of the Lord be with you. Number three, as he comes in, he brings peace in life's victories. Of course, victories. And we pray for victory in their coming. We pray for victory. And when you, when you are celebrating victory, may God's peace will be with you. In Romans 16, 20, the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet soon. And some Bibles say, he will crush Satan shortly. And so friends, my prayer is Satan is crushed and victories all through. Of course, when the Prince of Peace comes in, you will persist. You will insist, you will resist, and you will desist. And as you persist and insist, and as you insist, you go on. And there are certain things that you must desist from. I have mentioned this. And there are things that we must avoid. There are things that we must persist on, insist on. And there are things that we must resist. And so that as we mature, the peace of God, the Satan will be crushed under your feet. My prayer during this Christmas season that the Lord crushes the enemies clothes that comes all around but he brings you together you gather the broken pieces and bring them together number four and he says that when he comes he will bring peace in life with the relationships yes life with the relationships husband and wife parents and children neighbors our leaders name them in our relationships of course in our we, we are relating all the time and this christmas season christmas season is four Gathering together, eating together, rejoicing together, praying together, praying together, sharing good things together, sharing gifts. Of course, actually, the Boxing Day will come and the people have to open boxes of gifts. Of course, we keep sending gifts to friends and relatives. And so in our, in our relationships, we need the peace of the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3, now he says that enduring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace enduring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And so I pray for your family. I pray for your church. I pray for your workplace. I pray for everything that the Lord will give you the peace. And finally, this marks it that as we wind up this session, he will bring peace in life with witness. And, you know, we are there to be witnesses. Jesus sent us to be witnesses to our neighbors, but also beginning with ourselves. Yes, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, 23, the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. During this Christmas season, friends, 
we share the love of God, we share the greatness of the Lord, and in our witness, move about, and may people see something good in you, and may the Prince of Peace reign in your heart, and very many other messages will be flying about, about Christmas, embrace the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will be the, your Prince of Peace, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. The shepherd is sung, they rejoiced, Angels were attracted to come down and sing with the shepherds. The Magi from the east, the wise men, also moved during this season. And because the Savior had been born, even when they were under the Roman rule, but as Isaiah put it, that the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. I pray that God unveils his light for you. He unveils his light for me. And so this Christmas season is brightened up. And so that we sing together. The reason why actually brightening up, you see Christmas trees lighting up in our houses. And may that light, may, may it be a light moment for you, sharing together, smiling together, laughing together, praying together. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Merry Christmas to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <music>